let's see now. Hey, everybody. Hmm. All right. I can see me. Well, so that's always a good thing. And yet another box has come for the library. So, since this weighs more than I do, and that's saying something, I guess it's time to see what is in the box. I'm telling you, either the tape is getting stronger, or I'm getting old. And, excuse me, while I am getting old, lie to me, tell me the tape is getting stronger. Must be Gorilla Tape. Yeah, yeah. That's my excuse. And I'm sticking to it. Oh, my. I ordered these so long ago I forgot about them. Talk about wrapped. These, good library family, are magazines called the Evergreen Review. I have food in my refrigerator that isn't wrapped this tight. When in doubt, get out the scissors. Much better. Much faster, too. The Evergreen Review was a magazine very popular in the 60s and 70s. It was a literary review that published things that mainstream publications wouldn't. It was a little like, uh, for those of you who are old enough to remember avant-garde, Eros, and things like that, the Evergreen Review was very much like that. The works that were too controversial would show up in the, whoa, in the Evergreen Review. For the record, this is May 1970. And I'm even trying to think of who might even be in here. Covers that pretty much reflected its time, but uh, covers that nonetheless are still pretty much in step with today. I'm not sure this one is talking about an art show in Minneapolis. And somehow, with all the turmoil that's going on, that seems appropriate. Oh, not only is she gorgeous, the magazine is talking about exclusive interview with two dissenting Chicago conspiracy jurors. An interesting piece for the library. One of the reasons that I was always interested in the Evergreen Review was because it was so controversial about what it published. While so many of these things are old hat common now, in their day, and we're backing up 50 years, things like uh, Barbarella were considered X-rated just about. Now, it doesn't even really carry a soft R. The um, Story of O was first published in the Evergreen Review. That's one of the ways they got into the country when the Story of O, isn't she gorgeous? And this is February of 71. Uh, the Story of O was published, ooh, speaking of the Story of O. For those of you who can see that. The story of O was published in the Evergreen Reader, and we have the issue that they started the publication in. Uh, because it was banned in the United States as a book, the Evergreen Reader brought it in and started publishing the chapters. Hence, American readers got to sample Pauline Réage's masterpiece, and they got around the censors too. So, I am eager to add these to the collection, and I'm definitely going to be perusing this one again, because they're talking about the sequel, which was called Return to the Chateau, and there was a great controversy about that in terms of whether or not Rayage actually wrote it. So, 
now you know what came in today's boxes. And if you want to see more, either keep watching the videos or come on down to the library where you can find it all and sit and read and learn about who you are and how we got here. See you in the library.